No, yeah, no, the, we, we got one of those. We got Strickland, and he's a bit too big for me. So he's the he's the bit the the eighty five or two hundred five er. He's the guy who talks shit. But other than that, we're all just working hard, and that's about it. The All Star app, the number one app in the business. UFC, Bellator, One Championship, PFL, and more. Get the app right now. Link in description. The first thing I want to jump into, Jeremy, is uh, Project Wellbeing. I've been seeing these guys a lot lately. A lot of people are going to them in Vegas. Talk about that that uh, that gym, that facility. Yeah, man, it's 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 a game changer. You know, I like SNC was always something I kind of like popped in and out of a different gyms and whatnot. Especially in Vegas, I didn't really have like a a set like back in Canada. I had a, a good a good gym out there, but um, in Vegas, I was kind of all over the place and. I'm so used to it being everything so close that it was hard to find, you know, a gym that would fit into my daily schedule. And uh, actually, Dan Ige, he's been going to uh, Sean at Project for a while. And uh, you just, I just saw some of the stuff and like a lot of the movements are just crazy that like stuff you don't really typically see on your standard like deadlift, bench press and whatnot. And, I, and I've worked out at the PI and this just looked like such MMA functional movement like hips involved, turning, core strength, everything. So I wanted to go check it out. And Eric got me in, in contact with them. And they're actually like five minutes down the road from my house. So it's perfect. And then um, it's just like probably the, the most expensive facility I've ever been into. You know, he's invested a lot into that. And he's got all the Kaiser machines, the oh, any, anything you can think of. And it's just stuff I've, I've only seen there too, you know. And uh, so he's... And Sean's really good. He's worked with the Raiders, Las Vegas Raiders, Raiders out here, and a lot of boxers and a lot of football players and NFL and whatnot. And, you know, to me, those are the best athletes in the world right now as NFL players. So, um, yeah, just a good background. And then he's been slowly developing the MMA and got a lot of boxers in there. And now, like, you know, we got Pettis Brothers are over there, a lot of the Duke Rufus guys who came out to Vegas. Um, Francis was in there the other week. You know, we got lots of different guys. And, uh, it's all different stuff. Every time you go in there, it's something new. And it's a lot of the Kaiser stuff is air pressured. So it's a lot less taxing on the body in, in the sense of like the next day soreness. So I'm, I'm working like crazy hard, but then the next day I'll be a little sore. But once you get warmed up, you're good rather than like when I used to lift it, I'd be doing deadlifts or squats or whatever with like steel plates and whatnot. And then the next day, you can't move for like a week, you know, and then it throws off your grappling because you need the hip dexterity and whatnot. So I just found out with this new strength and conditioning, I'm able to bounce back right away the next day and be training just as hard again. And probably the best shape I've been in. I've used them in my last two camps and it's like a game changer to me, man. I, I feel the physically I'm just in so much better shape since, you know, a year now that I've been working with them. So it's a, it's a huge elevation to my game. Oh yeah, that's different than you've been working with them for a year now. You know, some I thought it yeah, was just for the this first, camp. No, it was uh, the first Pico fight that fell through. So it was pretty much yeah, oh. February of last year. But I only had you know I got hurt, yeah. and then we had the Pico fight. I got one round in, so I haven't been able to really show it. You know, but I've been with with him for three camps, and this is my second fight now. All right, I, let's talk about the Pico fight, man. Five minutes. Yeah, yeah unfortunate ending to that one you know what i mean just yeah. just take us through the the first round and, and what you thought of that that round yeah man i mean it was going my way it was going exactly how uh i envisioned and you know as soon as i got my hands on him i just feel like i'm a pretty big featherweight you know my my physique i'm long but i don't give up any strength either you know even with guys in the gym and other 45ers even 55ers so i think that's where i kind of differentiate you know typically tall lanky guys in the division are usually like suspect wrestling or kind of like physically weak like long strikers or something and so my frame is just i get a hold of guys and i just got a lot of leverage to use and um i felt that in there you know he's a strong stocky kid but once i got my hands on him i know i know he's injured and not exactly sure when when that happened but uh just the feel of him once i got a hold of him i was oh man this is me a long night you know and i i felt good and gave me that confidence knowing like this is probably arguably the best on paper wrestler in the division and how I felt with him. I just felt like the rest of this division is in trouble, man. And that's why uh, I think leading into this, this next matchup too, it's even more evident that it's uh, 
I think it's going to be a, a really good showing, and I'm going to claim my uh, title shot with this with this dominant win. It seems like Pedro he believes that this fight is a, a title eliminator. Is yeah. is that what Bellator is saying to you guys too? Yeah, you know, I mean, I was I I don't have direct correspondence with Bellator, but you know, Ali, my manager, he's been. Uh, Right out the gate, you know, this is a title, title contender shot. You know, you win this fight, we're fighting for the belt next, you know. And he's been all over it, claiming his title shot, you know. So I'm, I'm letting him do all the talking, and I'm going to come in, whoop his ass, and then uh, take that title shot, you know. Well, you're Walk in a little bit better it. position than him if you look yeah, at the yeah. record, so, right? I mean, realistically, though, if you if you look at on the division rankings, you know, Patricio is a guy who likes to stay busy. He needs contenders at 45. We're right now, him and I, me and Pedro, the only two guys in the top five coming off of a win or that aren't, you know, the lightweight Grand Prix or, you know, torn ACL or torn shoulder, whatever. Like a lot of these guys are all hurt and coming off of losses. Mads needs to bounce back. You know, a few guys are the lower ranking, seven, eight, nine. Um, and so this is two, five versus three, only two guys coming off of a win. Yeah. My only loss is uh, to uh, a close one to Borix, who just fought for the title, and that was two years ago that I lost. You know, so I think this for sure. Me, I feel like I'm right in the, right in line. You know, I I, I get dust up uh, Pedro. That's that's three in a row, um, three top five opponents in a row, yeah. and um, I do it with you know dominantly. There's no there's no question. You know, and I, Pedro, I mean Pitbulls, he'll be next. Unless the only thing that would freak you know happen is him go down to 35 or try to mix that all up but they got patchy and you know he was just mentioning it so i i knew that but they got patchy and stots trying to you know sort their thing out you got sergio you know coming back aiming for a you know early summer return so i don't know i can't really control any of that i just know this is this might not be for the title shot but this is for the number one contender 100 percent. yeah you know, i feel like the winner of this is the guy at the top of the queue because everyone else is either coming off of losses. AJ's gone. He's not a featherweight to me anymore. Um, and that's it. So I, I look at, I take out Pedro. You eat what you kill. You're, I'm number three now, and uh, that's it. Well, Pitbull just fought in December in Japan. Yeah, so he won that so fight. He's like just basically summer. waiting for you guys. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I would, I would think. Yeah, it's, it's, man, it sounds right to me. Let's talk about right. uh, Pedro, man. Pedro, what type of fire do you see in him? He's one of those just gritty, you know, he's got the dog in him. You know, that's about it. He's, uh, I wouldn't say he's like excellent anywhere or, or somewhere like you got to really worry about his power or his submission threats or anything like that. But he's just resilient and he's got a good, good gas tank. He's confident in himself and, and he, he finds a way to steal these rounds, like very close, close fights that are going the other way. Or even if he gets dropped early in the round, he still rallies back. He ends round strong. So he's just one of those guys that's not going to give up. So, uh, but I think, you know, skill for skill, I don't think he's on my level. But uh, I just have to make sure I go out there. And I'm in shape. I, I always am. That's one of my things I pride myself on, that I'm not going to slow down. So I'm not going to give him a, a chance to try to rally back and, and win this fight anywhere. Where do you see, like, the biggest gap when you look at skill for skill? I think you got to look at grappling just with how he's dealt with his past opponents. He, who know, you never know when you get a hold of a guy. You know, he could be a world beater. You saw with Volkanovski and, and Makachev, you know, you know, you didn't know until you got your hands on each other. But uh, just from what I've seen and the guys, he's, opponents he's faced and how he's dealt with them, I would definitely think my, my grappling is, I think I'm the best grappler in the, in the featherweight division in Bellator. And uh, I think he's probably on the weaker end of the top 10 of, of grappling. Um, so I think that's the biggest exploiting, but I don't want to go in there and just be like, I'm going to take him down and, and submit him. You know, I really honestly in my heart believe I can stop him with punches on feet too. So that maybe that just is something I have to show to prove that this title shot is mine is go out there and, you know, finish him on the feet, but I'm not going to go hunting one direction or the other. I'm just going to let the fight, he brings the fight to you. So it's going to be pretty easy to find me. I'm going to be in the middle of the center of the cage. He's going to come. And we're going to figure it out exactly what happens there. If he's rushing right in, and it, 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 the takedowns are going to be open. But if he's not, you know, he's going to he's going to be eat some leather. Do you feel like your 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 grappling, your wrestling has improved, like 
I don't know. I know your all around skills have improved over the years, but yeah. your your wrestling and your grappling is that something that you've excelled at? Yeah, like that's something I just naturally was always, you know, adapted to really well. And then traveling all over and training. Well, in Vegas, you're always getting different looks and different bodies, different coaches, different training partners. So I'm always adding new things, little roots. I go with the same guys for a while. They know my my tricks on, you know sequences in my roots so i have to change it up okay now i gotta go a different way and then i start get really good at that stuff and i almost forget about the stuff that i was hitting on everybody else before that you know so it's it's nice to tie it all together and then you get a guy like kai for example was out here for a while he went back home for to hawaii for about i would say six seven months and he came back and we were training like every single day and then i was going back and like i had to almost like re-remember a lot of the stuff we were working on before and it's just different. So it's, I say I'm constantly, constantly evolving, but feet to the floor, honestly, I'm just getting better. I spend a lot of time on, on striking just cause there's so much to learn, so much stuff to learn there. And, uh, but the grappling is just something that you can do a little bit harder in training. And I feel like that's where I make the most gains constantly. Who do you work your striking with? Uh, I actually got, man, Eric is more like head coach mixes in both my fit ins with my rest and my striking. Eddie Barocco is my, my kickboxing, my, my diehard, my, my guy. And then Giff, James Gifford is my boxing coach. So I got a straight boxing coach, kickboxing coach, and then like an MMA hybrid kickboxing MMA coach. So I got it all, man. I cover, cover bases. I'm, I'm, I'm on the mitts every morning and then, uh, doing something else in the evening, either grappling hard, sparring, S and C, whatever. But I'm focusing like, you know, striking every single day. Well, you, you know, you got a dream team coaching staff. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. My man. Yeah, it's easy. Dude. It's easy. Right. You, there's so many guys taking up. advantage of that. <laughs> yeah. He's got to show up and then, uh, put the work in and that's it. You know, it's not, not too hard to, to find hard work out here. For sure. And you mentioned Kai, man, he's a, he's a great training partner, someone that you're very close yeah. with. Who else has been helping you more throughout this camp? Uh, well, earlier on, it was Ige, Dan, you know, we were getting him ready for Damon Jackson. So I was in the gym right away, helping him out. Cause I'm a big, tall, long kind of guy like that as well. Um, and then he fought and I was still training there and, and Kai came back, came out and finished the rest of the camp. So those were like my two, main guys. I got a few amateur guys that were helping me out and just the regular, the regular crew at extreme, you know, there's always lots of guys, Farid and Javid are good guys that, you know, grappling with and Cody and there, the, the list goes on, you know, Julian Arosa, there's lots of guys out here. Mads, Mads is back in town. He's been back for you know a month or two and he's looking to get booked. So a lot of good featherweights at in Bellator and the UFC and, and up and comers. So a lot of you guys my size right now. It's a good time to be in, in Vegas for a featherweight. When you train with, with those guys, there's so many guys there. Are there any guys that, like, talk shit to you in training camp? Nah. Or during tra nah? You're too nice, nah, man. Yeah, You're just too nice of a guy. Smile, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's good, honestly. We, it's a team. It's a team environment, yeah. you know. So it's uh, – there's no hard feelings ever. Yeah. Um you know, well, I'm not talking about hard feeling. I'm just talking about, you know, like jokingly talk shit to each other. No, yeah, yeah. no. The, the, we, we got one of those. We got Strickland, and he's a bit too oh. big for me. So yeah. he's, the, he's the, bit, the, the 85 or 205 or yeah. he's the guy who talks shit. But other than that, we're all just working hard, and that's yeah. about it. For sure. Hey, you know, there's – you're in a big position, you know, yeah. with this fight coming up. You know, do you feel – I don't want to say pressure, but do you feel a little bit more anxiety? You know what I mean? Like some more eagerness to actually step in there compared to like past fights? You know, honestly, I'm just more not even for what the, this win's going to bring because I, I every single fight I have to win. You know, that's in my brain. You know, you're putting all that work. That's two paychecks. Uh, that's food on my table. So the, the win is the, always the same amount of pressure, but I'm just more anxious, just more excited to get out there and been a while you know I've, I've built up trained so hard for this last year since sanchez a year and a half and i've had five minutes of, of a fight that i was doing very well in but that was kind of taken from me as well so i'm like man i just can't wait to get in there and start slinging it you know and throwing heat and experiencing that 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 dublin crowd and the fight week i just i want it all man i want to get on that plane and get out there these next few days are just kind of maintenance the work's done um i leave actually yeah Friday, we're, we're at Wednesday night, so like I have one more day in Vegas, so I'm just kind of like 
man, I just want to get over there, get this weight off me, make weight and scrap. So I just, I'm excited to genuinely excited to scrap. So that's about it really. The, the, the results of the fight, I know I already have it in my head what's happening and what's going to happen after that's even better, but it all comes from a win. So I just got to go perform. It's almost like a, a good thing that, that that fight didn't go all three rounds because you didn't get to show everything and and your opponent doesn't know what's coming oh, yeah. in a way right and oh, yeah, no. and you get to show that like what do you like what do you envision in this fight i honestly feel like i'm gonna get a finish you know and it's gonna be he, he's a durable guy but i i don't i don't see it going into the third i mean i'm trained and i prefer i'm prepared for it I, I got a gas tank to go for five you know and uh at a high, high pace. So need be, I can do it, but I really want to go in there and put him away, man. I really, really do. And I, I feel like his style, he's a very aggressive guy. He's a fun fighter to watch, you know? So he's, he's a guy that's going to meet me. He's not going to be backpedaling and trying to, you know, stay away from me the whole time. So if I'm bringing the fight to him, I know he's going to bring the fight to me. And I feel like that guarantees fireworks and that guarantees a finish for me.